my party We're just getting started A life is a dream or a nightmare starring Hand me a drink cause I think I'm going all in Get me a shrink who can catch me when I'm falling Cover up my scars, flip the handlebars Crashing in my car, wake up in a bar I'll be a superstar, just on my avatar This world is so bizarre, empty out the reservoir Yeah Shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way So I'm taking six shots till I'm feeling okay I think I'm going crazy Don't think I'll get on safe So I'm taking six shots all straight to the face I'm taking six shots, are you coming with me? I'm taking six shots, yeah, straight to the face And I wanna get lost, I'm sick of this place Don't know how to stop when I'm feeling this way Episode of AIW Mid Atlantic Championship Wrestling. This is Bob Dog along with uh, Rick Diesel and uh, let me tell you something, Bob Dog. This is my chick. No, no. You look like a chick. Anyway, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. This is my second episode back in this new format. I'm getting a little more comfortable. Got my hat turned around. I'm getting back into Rick Diesel mode. Uh oh. Got me a new shirt. I noticed that. They told me that I had to have wardrobe for this. So yeah. They're giving me shirts now. So at least I'm getting free shirts out of them. Well, hey, at least it's free. What we got on this episode, Bobby Dog? Well, on this episode right Somehow here. Somehow keep on calling you Bobby Fulton. Nah, I look better than Bobby Fulton than I wish he did. Well, as you know, wrestling fans, each episode we have a classic match from the vault of the AIWF. And we've had some great wrestlers in the past. And we're in 27 years. That's of course, the call starts in like 1995, so basically it's tour right. So, I don't know what they're going to pull out of the vault, but I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Also, our... First match here is going to be Jordan Kingsley against Daniel Halen. So we have on this episode we've got Jordan Kingsley versus Daniel Halen. Daniel Halen, who is supporting, sporting that new AIWF Mid Atlantic TV title. It's red. I like that. Oh, it's red. Okay, well, it's red. <clears throat> maybe match his face with like the light on a hooker's porch. It is red, baby. I wouldn't know about that. Yeah, you would. No, no. Tell me. <clears throat> but either way. You never know what to expect here in AIWF. You got fingernail scratches on your back. Are you jealous? Yes, I am. Oh, well. Go ahead. But anyway, wrestling fans, stay tuned. walking away from me. You I'm not walking away friend. from you. Either way, wrestling fans, stay tuned for more exciting action. Let me see you. Right up. Let me tell you something. Unless he's I'm going to help you here. We've got, look, so, who is John Evans? What oh, do you know about John Evans? That, we're going to hear from John Evans this week. I'm not sure who he is. Lord God, I'm trying to film something in here. Get out! Get out! Get out! No, I see. Get, get. I gotta get to this. God dang time, time. Can't do nothing with you. We're gonna hear from John Evans. It's not you too. I tell you what. What's We're gonna hear from John Evans, and our, our main event on this episode is Jordan Keats and Daniel Halen. I That's know you right. don't talk about it, but I'm gonna add a little flair to it. Right but, I, but now, first, making his return. We're gonna go to the ring from here, Bobby. Dalton, right. Dalton, Dalton. I can't tell you two apart. We're gonna go to the ring because we have the return of who? I'll let you say it. John Heartbreak. Let's get this will be interesting. So we're going to the ring. How does someone? 
You can say in this when you say nothing at all. Look. I'm not going to waste a bunch of time. I know you guys came here to see some action. I've done a lot of things in the past few months, past year, that I'm not very proud of. But one thing that I can be very proud of is calling out Daniel Halen, telling him to bring yourself down here to this ring and let me show him what it's like to mess around with John Hartbreak. So without any further ado, I want no, I demand, I demand Daniel Halen to come out here, look at me in the face, and tell me what happened. Come on.
or even come close to Daniel Payton. Until I say so. You, my boy, are fired. I hope that's understood. End of conversation. Part-time uh, part uh, situation, sort of like she is, and I am as well. Oh, man. Oh, yeah, and of course, all the riders of the apocalypse coming out here, except Frodo. He's not with them. Pestilence is not with them. And there's war, creeping death. May I do the honors? Yeah, please. J. Marcus Lawson. He weighs 100 pounds. He is from Revelations and in his Halloween vest, Batman. That was an interesting intro. And that's war and creepy death on the outside. He could do some of the, uh, the hot dogs and the nachos. Yeah. Well, it, Creeping Death told me it was an easy way to remember the riders of the apocalypse. You know, Just remember famine women, looked like he was in the middle of a famine. If these women would ever find the fathers of all these miscellaneous children and get them back to the house and have some discipline and some rules, we wouldn't have them running around everywhere. You've really got a bad problem with Elkin, don't you? I have a problem with failure and people that don't want to be successful that are going nowhere and thrilled to death about it. Oh man, here comes the golden boy, Chris Chance. This kid's amazing. Now you give him a proper introduction now, J. Marcus Lawson. I mean, you look at these guys automatically, it's the difference between a winner and a loser. Oh man, Famine got out of there quick. Yes, Well, to him. Boy, he has got the crowd in the palm of his hand. And his opponent tonight, he hails from the Queen City weighing 250 pounds. He is the golden boy, Chris Chance. And a warm welcome from Elkin. Not a bad job on the PA announcing there, Jay Marcus Lawson. I am, I am a broadcast professional. He gets ready for the, uh, for the famine. I am too. Get ready to go. Look, All right, let's, as soon as they're both in the ring. Oh. I can't get a good sound out of that thing. Saving my life. Well, you know, the best thing about uh, Famine, he's already dressed for Halloween. Already did. So, 
Bill Tommy ring, and he couldn't even hear it either. We've got an out of tune bell. Huh? Couldn't hear that it was Halloween? No, couldn't hear the bell, because we are officially underway. This is the weight difference according to our notes. Of, of 115 a, pounds. That, that's insane. That's like, um, that's like three of these illegitimate children. No, it's like one. Five, like five. Oh, what a power slam. Oh, Picasso, that jarred every bone in his body. And they jarred every bone in Picasso from over here. No kidding, wow. Oh, big chop in the corner. Oh, man, that was different. Oh, and a right hand follows it up. Irish whip to the other side. And Famine in deep, deep trouble. He is down, I see. Yeah. All right. Yeah. First time I've ever seen you at a loss for words. Not another chop. Oh, I can talk Not as much. Well, okay, let's. Uh... Oh, big, big Irish whip. Let's talk about this fabulous rag ensemble. That uh, the famine is uh, sh showcasing for us too. It looks like it might have been a hoodie at one time. Maybe a grenade went off in the pocket. Well, I know well, he has him in the camel clutch now. It's probably not an elk hoodie though because it's going not for that, white. Going for that arm bar. Probably not an elk and hoodie because it's not white. You know, it reminds me a whole lot of that old Ole Anderson arm bar. You know, it really does look like. See, how he's got got the right hand planted in the back of his shoulder, in the shoulder blade, and is really sitting back on that thing. And the creeping death, they do not like this at all. They don't like it at all. Where's Ole Anderson when he needs it? Ole Anderson is Probably happily retired. Home. Not in the best of health these days uh, here, but that doesn't matter. If you're watching, Ole, we appreciate it. Oh, big knee. And as a course, we appreciate all you fans for watching. That was one of those Harley race like knees. The two count only. It's the best thing about uh the Golden Boy? Uh, yeah, well, a guy like the Golden Boy. Uh -huh. He's been around, he's watched the tapes, studied the craft, he works at it, he works at it, he works at it, knows how to maintain a workout regime and proper eating. Yeah, nutrition, big Yeah. Thing. Which, I mean, that ought to, I mean, any one of those things would separate it from, well, take your pick from whoever's in the back. But the fact you got that combination out here puts him way ahead of, mo well, yeah, everybody else. Well, you know, Chris Chance is a And it's very, just a matter of time until he's got championship gold. Well, if he stays around, around here, you better believe it. And you can probably see this guy all over the Southeast, tell you the truth. As I understand, he's got a lot of experience in a lot of different places trying to make his mark in the AIWF, you know. That's where they all seem to end up. Out of the ring, a nice move by Famine. Dangerous place to be out there with the war and the creeping death. I think the Golden Boy got a little too comfortable, and now death and war unleash a little bit of hell on the Golden Boy. I think you just broke the G rating right I now. I just did. Yeah. Rewind it back about 10 seconds, edit it out. Sorry about that, but that's what they were doing. And it is a biblical reference, so. It is. Nothing out of context here. Well, and you should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> well, I think you should have used the phrase uh, in regards to uh, not the Golden Boy, but the other folks, uh, boring as in front of your little, your little, your little name dropping, your little word dropping. You, no. Yeah. I don't insult these guys. Not like that. Take cheap personal shots. That's your department. I'm not a wrestler. A oh, I know. Yeah, I know. I mean, what's, what's a cheap personal shot about an honest critique of the situation? Oh, oh man, and that single leg, and I couldn't tell really, I think he was just working over the ankle there, kind of an ankle lock move, but with the extra help from the outside from Creeping Death. He's not tapping out, should we know? No, no, he's not. With the Creeping Death and the war at ringside, uh, Picasso does not think that the Chris Chance has a chance, actually. Oh. Big knee. And now, oh, what a suplex. Snapped him right in the middle of it. That was textbook, fans. Almost up. Oh, that's beautiful. Nicely executed by the Golden Boy. 
And he is having words with War. And War may be uh, breaking. One, the, uh, two, uh, and a three count, no. Two says reference. Two, he only got two. Four dose. As they say, Thank Dobson you. and Lexington. And Kernersville. East side of Winston, some parts. Well, yeah, some parts. Yeah, you know the roads are labeled in Spanish. I've been over there. With another move by Chris Chance to wear him down. Yeah. And uh, he's playing a smart game. He's got, he knows he's outnumbered. He's got, look, he's got war on he the opposite side of the ring. He ought to go for a quick power move, hit him in the back of the head, hit him in the jaw, get him dazed, knock him out. If he can knock him out, get a quick pin, take care of it. Mm. Keep him in the center of the ring. Yeah. Well, they, uh, gotta, yeah. Yeah. But it's so hard with the modern style of wrestling to not use the ropes. It's easier said than done. I mean, see, there you go, Irish whip. And a flying head scissor takeover. Yeah, what? A you don't agree with that call? No, but there was some idiot in the crowd clapping. Well, maybe you like that move. You are hard on our fans, you know that? That's the thing. Right in front of the referee. Oh, but that ain't. Bill Holiday's tied up with famine as they choke away. And see, this, this negates the weight advantage. Well, and that's the problem with these people. They think they're uneven. They think they're it's an even play oh. between people in the ring, people in the business, and them. There's not. Okay, this is a parade, and they're just the kids on the side of the streets watching it go by. You're referring to creeping death and war? You're referring to these lazy, fat, sloppy people around the ring. You know, you'll get Not here, I mean everywhere. Every building you go into. Oh, but I guess if we worked Winston-Salem, it wouldn't be like that. It's like that anywhere you go. Huge German suplex, by the way. Yeah. Nice. And now, him off. Going to try to. yep, what's it going to do with him? He's got, oh, wait a minute. Oh, the referee did not see this as well. That was way low. They got a taste of his own medicine. And it was great manipulation of the referee, as I like to call it. Learned that term from Robert Rome. Manipulate the referee. And you don't know who I'm talking about. Uh, whatever. Oh, man, look at that. It's like camel clutch slash sleeper. Yeah, very nice. Now the golden boy in control. Larry Swift goes down. Oh, drop kicked him right. Looked like it was right in his Gotta right put him stomach. away. He can't be just walking around thinking about it. Well, you got to remember now, the AIWF recently converted to from a 20-foot ring to a 14-foot ring, and some of the guys maybe still having to uh, adjust to those fewer steps. He is on there. He's Holiday's got to do something. Oh, I don't think Holiday's got to do anything now. Down's going to be creeping dead. And the former AIWF champion licking his wounds as a. Well, that's disgusting. The Golden Boy, Chris Chance, firmly in control. Where's War on the apron now? He gets knocked off. Mint. I mean, yeah, Famine misses. Spine Buster. And now, the golden boy will go to the top rope. What's he going to do with him here? And, oh, big elbow. There's the cover. One, two. He got him. Yeah, he brought him in. Your winner, the golden boy. You saw that. He signified to us that he wants a title shot. So I guess you can expect to see more. Well, anything will be better than that other idiot. Look at Creeping Death over. Uh, we need to stay with this in the ring with um, with um, Famine. I get him and Minion confused from time to time. All you have to do is remember that Minion looks like Frodo. They are both cruiserweights, I think. And he ricocheted earlier. Yep. Sorry, I didn't mean to Tom Green you with that microphone. They're just going to drag him out. Well, the riders of the apocalypse are going to back. back. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm sure. I'm just, uh, <laughs> creeping death, not a happy camper.
Stars, the AIWFLA Cruiserweight Champion, Wrestling fans, you in for a treat right here. Yeah. Jordan Kingsley, the AIWF Mid-Atlantic Cruiserweight Champion going against the newly crowned AIWF Mid-Atlantic Television Champion, Daniel Halen. You know, Jordan Kingsley could come out of this a double champion tonight. Yeah, I'll tell you what, he's... But you know, we got something else we need to think about. There, Bobby Dalton. As this match gets underway, we need to take into consideration that earlier in this episode, John Heartbreak made his return to the AIWF Mid-Atlantic, and the man he called out right from the start was Daniel Halen. Oh, yeah. I mean, <clears throat> history goes back, and many of you don't know it, Daniel Halen and John Heartbreak used to be part of the Fear Factory, and all of a sudden, they turned their back on John Heartbreak. And you know he has some bad blood against those guys. Well, I don't know if it was because they felt like John Heartbreak wasn't living up to their standards. Maybe John Heartbreak done something that, that upset the rest of the Fear Factory. But all I know is he is out. Daniel Halen, as you see not too long ago, come out and paid some new guy named John Evans. Handed him something which looked like money after a beatdown. Old Buddy Flowers, not too long ago, right here on this very program, and now Daniel Halen is in the ring defending his AIWF Mid Atlantic Television Champion against the high flyer Jordan Kingsley. And I know for a fact that John Heartbreak is somewhere in this building. Yes, he is. He's not too far behind, and I know he's got a score to settle. Oh, oh, nice. Jordan Kingsley showing why he is the high flyer of the Mid Atlantic area. If I'm, you know, if I'm not mistaken, Jordan Kingsley was also the World Cruiserweight Champion there at one time. He was for a little while, lost that title in Georgia. But he was still young when he held that World Cruiserweight title. Yeah, he has definitely gained some experience since being here. Oh, nice headlock there. He's another one of these guys head. that gets better every match. I tell you what, when it, it comes to cruiserweights, AIWF has some great ones out there. I tell you what, AIWF all over the country has top cruiserweights. And, and a lot of people may not know it, but the AIWF, we may, this may be the Mid-Atlantic area, but the AIWF, you know, they have a world champion. Eric Darkstorm out of West Virginia is a world champion, and there is a world TV champion, believe it or not, which makes for which Daniel Halen is a top contender for. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, nice move right there from Jordan. Uh -oh. oh. You know, a lot of people don't realize this, but Jordan Kingsley comes out of the school of Robert Gibson of the Rock and Roll Express down in Georgia. What? So, Jordan Kingsley is, he's been bred for this high flying. The Rock and Roll Express, WWE Hall of Famers, and that's Jordan, that's Jordan Kingsley's lineage right there. Yeah, I tell you, if you get trained by Robert Gibson or Ricky Morton, either one of the Rock and Roll Express, you got some of the top in the world. Looks like Daniel is stalling for time right now. Oh, he's sitting down over there. He's taking a break. Drinking water. Hey, it's hot in this building. It is. But well, we do appreciate the town of Mount Oh, yes, we do. I, even I appreciate them on occasion. Yep. But they do come out for AIWF Mid-Atlantic Wrestling. They have been coming out in Mount Airy, because this is where the AIWF started, right here. This is where the roots began 27 years ago. And now it's worldwide. Yes. And expanding daily. And, and you can see classic matches right here on these episodes or on AIWF Classics on YouTube. Go join that group and get to see a lot of classic stuff. And what I heard, the anniversary they just had here a while back was awesome. It has grown so much. Daniel Halen, oh. Daniel Halen 
showing that he can do some of those moves as well. Nice bridge. Oh, little amateur action going on in the ring. Suplex. Well, you'd rather see a fair fight than you would dirty tactics. One thing about Daniel Halen, though, he doesn't care how he wins. He no, Daniel Halen, if, if you get him at a disadvantage, he'll pull out every dirty trick in the book. He is, as they like to say, the dirtiest player in the mid Atlantic area. If I'm not mistaken, he's destroyed Nate Diamond's knee. Confused. Daniel Haley got to get outside now and catch his breath. He's got to get his bearings or, or he may lose this title tonight right here in Mount I'm just wondering if he has his mind on John Heartbreak. Oh, he needs to have his mind on John Heartbreak. Because I'm going to tell you right now, John Heartbreak, he was a member of the Fear Factory. That hasn't been that long ago. And it won't take much for John Heartbreak to come right out here. Oh, my oh, God. The ring apron. You got to remember all those, all those dirty tactics, anything that you won't, you won't be all right over there, Bob. Dog. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. Well, you got to understand something. Let me tell you something about John Heartbreak. He knows everything that goes through the minds of the Fear Factor. They can't, they, they cannot have changed their game plan that much since they kicked him out. Right oh, the eyes. Oh, Daniel Hale under the eyes. Uh oh. Daniel Halen's notorious for working just the Just like knees. we said, just like we said just a few minutes ago, you get Daniel Halen at an advantage, he'll pull out a dirty trick in the book. Oh, he's going to hyperextend that knee right there. I tell you what, Daniel Halen's got some people on his trail, though. Not only John Heartbreak, but also one of the top contenders for that title is one of the go, Nate Diamond. You know, in the back of his mind, he still has unfinished business. Oh, surfboard. Oh, oh that's, that's a kinda... beautiful surfboard by Daniel Hayes. Always reaching it in deeper. Oh. Daniel Hayes has got Jordan Keasley at quite, quite a disadvantage there. Yeah, he's got him pushed like a pretzel. Oh, he's fighting back. Oh, he's back up on his feet almost. Only a two count. <laughs> oh, another right to the eyes. Daniel Haley throwing those closed fist punches in on Jordan Kingsley. Uh oh. Draped over the ropes. Oh, I could have shut you He's got a five count, though. Keep in mind, no matter how dirty his tactics might be, he has a five count on those ropes. Yes, he does. That five, the five, five count, that'll take the wind out of you put you to sleep, though. Now Daniel Haley's stalking him. Oh, he missed. That's where that experience is coming in. Oh, Kings is got him by the hair of the head. Count. Oh, what's he got? Oh, it could be. Nope, only a two count. Oh, oh on his oh. head. Oh, I tell you what. These guys, they, they've took a beating. They, they've put a beating on each other in this yeah. ring. And, and it's everything they do to just keep it going. I think Kings is lucky he didn't break his neck like that. Yeah, being human in this building don't help out any. You know it's got to take a little extra out of it. Daniel Halen's in the ropes. Referee Darren's got to keep Jordan Kingsley back. It's in the rule book. Yep. As long as Daniel Halen's on those ropes, he can take a breather. Oh. And do something just like that. Yeah, that's right. That's one of your old tactics, ain't it? I, I don't remember. Yeah. 
You know, in the way, speaking of tactics in the past, Daniel Haley reminds me of a guy that used to be here a few years ago by one named Jimmy Brooks. They both got the Jumping same build. Jumping Jimmy, Jumping yes. Jimmy. He's got the Hall same. Hall of Famer, Jumping Jimmy. They had the same mentality and same kind of stature about them. Yeah. Oh. And, and, and Jumping Jimmy, could, he could pull out all those dirty tactics, too. He was he was something to watch back in the day. Oh, oh, oh man, he took Jordan's head off. Now, Halen for the cover. Damn, he got it, too. Jordan Kingsley oh. kicks out at two. This has definitely been an interesting match. Oh, close to this again. Oh, I hate him. Here he comes in. Oh, oh. right to the face. Oh, that was that knocked his teeth down. No. Sure, he's not going to try it. again. Oh, this, oh, oh, he had him up. Yep. He had him up. That knee. Oh, almost. Here he comes. Can he do it? Oh, oh look at that. Back in there. Oh, and missed. Oh. See, I can see Daniel Halen just, for some reason, I see him in a dark basement. Yeah. Watching videos of his opponents. Oh, I don't know why he just strikes me as that type of guy. Mm -hmm. he, he studies the game. I got to give him credit for yeah. that. He studies the game. And to an extent, you have to study. Yeah. Uh -oh. He's getting his set. Like he's got his second win about him. He just set him up, throwing him forward. Uh-oh, he's got Halen up. This is where Jordan Kingsley is dangerous, right uh -oh. here. On that top rope. Oh. Oh! Frankenstein. Oh! Whew. Looks like he got caught up in the rope. He did, he got caught. Only a two Only a two yeah, That could have right. That could have been it, right there. That could have ended a career. See, that's why they call them high-risk moves, Bobby Dog. That's, right. that's why they call them high-risk moves. You get up there, you take a chance every time you crawl up on it. That's why the mat is so big and the turnbuckle is so small. You're not supposed to be up there, Bobby Dog. I'm not going up there. Uh-oh. Oh! Oh! oh. From this. I'm telling you, these guys are exhausted. Yes, they are. That's why they say, kids, do not try this at home. Oh! oh. He pulled that one from out of somewhere, and I don't oh. know where. Uh oh, what's he doing? Uh oh, he's going back up. I don't know what he's up to, but he's about to make a high risk maneuver right here. But he's still favoring that knee a little bit. He's going up. Oh! Oh! Was that? Oh, that was a low blow! Oh, got him in the family jewel. Due to disqualification, the winner of the match is Jordan King! No title change. Yep, no title changes no in this match. On that one. I tell you what, this was a good move, but as usual, Daniel Halen with the low blows. Something in the ring. What's what's uh -oh. Kingsley doing? Oh, he's 